All right, this is John Kolo with GrowingYourGreens.com today with another exciting episode for you. And where I'm at today is I'm traveling and I'm here in Southern California. And uh, when I travel and I'm kind of bored, don't have anything to do, like my girlfriend likes to hang out and just kick back at the hotel, relax, whatever. I like to just go out and check stuff out and see what kind of stuff I could find, right? So today where I'm at, actually I'm at the uh, city of Alhambra uh, Community Garden. And actually this community garden was started in 1976. So now for over 40 years, you know, the community have been using this spot of land to grow food and uh, learn how to garden, all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, I already toured the whole community garden. Definitely a cool place. You know, some plots definitely look more well manicured than others. But what I thought I'd do with you guys today is actually uh, take you guys into the community garden and actually uh, show you guys and uh, sh the community garden, but also more importantly, share with you guys like my top 10 tips for gardening at a community garden or just uh, for gardening straight up at home. Like, you know, there's a lot of things I'm seeing when I'm here, like I'm seeing some really cool plants that are thriving here, maybe some things that aren't doing so well, and maybe just some things I would do different if it was my community garden plot. I mean, these are not my plots, but I'm gonna share with you guys my opinion. So whether you guys are, you know, home gardeners or gardening at a community garden, you guys can maybe take some of my suggestions to like up your gardening game just a little bit so you guys could be growing more food and doing it more efficiently, because that's really what I'm into. I'm into like really, efficient methods of growing food so it makes my work a lot less so as you guys can see we're now inside the community garden and this is a cool opportunity for me to use my selfie stick that i picked up for a dollar at the dollar store i forgot my real tripod today and i don't have anybody to be my tripod or my camera person so i got the selfie stick so we'll see how efficient i am at doing it also please let me know your comments do you like this episode with my selfie stick kind of giving you guys like a walking tour around instead of kind of like if i have my tripod i'm doing some more like stationary shots so I don't know if this is gonna make you guys bit, uh, dizzy or whatnot but I'll try to do my best with the camera guys all right so I think some of the shots I get is pretty cool you know you guys can see like what it looks behind me all the different you know raised beds basically everybody has like their little plot a lot of the plots actually just have a little number on them um, this is plot number 23 behind me and you guys can see like what it looks like you get a nice big large plot and uh, you're free to do with it whatever you want as long as you're grown organically that's one of the rules here at the community garden I, I think this is over a city well or something like that so they don't want any kind of runoff or contamination and there's no animals allowed at this community garden so yeah uh, let's see let's go ahead and take you guys around actually I want to show you guys my favorite a plot here at the community garden first. All right, so this is my favorite plot at the community garden. Let's go ahead and see if I could turn it for you guys and uh, show you guys what it is. Basically, they got like a lot of different uh, things growing. Swiss chard over there, um, fava beans, uh, nice uh, peas right here. Wait, you guys can't see those peas. <laughs> but over here, this is what I really like. Check this out, I don't know if you guys can see that. Basically, they built a structure out of wood, like two by three and some different, uh, you know, wood things and whatnot. And if you just look down here in the middle, <laughs> can you guys see what's down there basically they got all dragon uh, fruit like uh, climbing up the poles and then they basically go up on top of this trellis on the top uh, to get lots of sun and uh, I really think that's really cool for a community garden you know uh, the dragon fruit definitely is you know more of an investment than like uh, say like just growing some lettuce and I don't know how productive they're gonna be they got one two three four five I don't know, at least like maybe like a dozen plants. That's kind of cool. So I really like that. That it's like different. I never seen that at community garden growing dragon fruit. The thing I like a lot at the community garden is like right next door here. Look at this. Let me try to back the camera for you guys. You guys see that? What does it look like? This is cool, man. Oh, that's a shot right there. All right. What they got here is they got lots of sugar cane. It might look ba like bamboo to you. Bamboo and sugar cane, they're related. They're both grass. But uh, yeah, they got lots of uh, sugar cane growing looks really cool um, they got like uh, you know once again the framing up so like the sugar cane is not going to dump over and they got them tied together so they're kind of more erect and I like how they really have them spaced out like really nicely and I really like the color on this and you know even with uh, some of the colder weather here sugar cane not affected now as long as it doesn't get a frost you're gonna be good growing sugar cane so yeah I mean if you guys live in California Southern California specifically and have some space definitely would encourage you guys to grow some more diversity of the crops such as the sugar cane and the dragon fruit you know i know many of the farmers here are from you know uh, asia and whatnot and they're growing some very specialty crops that you might not normally see at a uh, normal community garden 
And so that's what I want to share with you guys next. Uh, you know, some crops that you may not be familiar with that may grow very well, and also introduce you guys to some new and distinct flavors, and more important, you know, foods that can be considered medicine, um, you know, because they are healing in their own respect. So the first crop you may not be familiar with, unless you've watched my show before, is this guy right here. We're coming up on it. Let's see if we can kind of get a nice shot on it as I duck down. Yeah, it's right here, right aside me right here. This is what it is. Let me see if I can do a close-up on the camera there for you guys. Ooh, a little bit difficult, sorry for the camera wobbling. So this one's known as the Okinawan spinach. And as you guys can see, the top side of the leaves green, but if we flip the leaf over on the back, it's nice purple rich color, really rich in uh, anthocyanins. And uh, this plant in itself is uh, really valuable to be growing. Number one, because you know a lot of people's plots are empty this time of year because it's uh, winter time, but look at this. I mean, they're just having to clip back this Okinawan spinach because it just keeps growing up. And they have a nice Okinawan spinach hedge over here that they could eat from all year long. Now, provided it doesn't uh, you know, frost here, this guy is going to be growing no problem whatsoever because this, the Okinawan spinach is a perennial vegetable. And unfortunately, in North America, we're not too familiar with perennial vegetables. We're familiar more with the annual vegetables. They have to plant once, and then you harvest it, and then you replant it. The perennial vegetables, like the Okinawan spinach, um, it basically just grows year-round, and it keeps it grows like a little shrub, right? It keeps producing leaves in the shoots, and you could keep harvesting it and eating it and enjoying it. Plus, you know, uh, this perennial vegetable is harvested by cutting. So you just take a little tip cutting, stick it in the ground, it'll sprout new roots, and it'll continue to grow. So this is surely one of the biggest tips I want to give you is, got, is you know, grow crops that are easy. I mean, in this climate here, you could plant this once and you'll never have to plant this again. You'll have it as long as you get, keep that plant healthy. You'll be eating every day. And there's many more perennial vegetables than just the Okinawan spinach. You know, there's also the longevity spinach. Um, also called Chinese spinach in some cases, or the Genera procumbens. That's another one that would really do good well and well in this climate here. Uh, next I want to show you guys another crop that's actually grown well for me and is growing for one of the farmers here. So now I want to share with you guys another crop that's actually doing quite well. I mean here's uh, the plot here and uh, this plot you know I could definitely identify some of the things and some of the things I cannot. I mean I only know this guy because actually I started growing this guy a year my about a year ago or over a year ago myself now and you know it, it keeps coming back. So. I'm kind of thinking it's a perennial a vegetable to me anyways and what it is right here I don't know if you guys could see that I'll raise the camera up but yeah this is it right here all this here it has once again that purple stem let me do a close-up for you guys it has this purple stem and uh, these leaves that look like this and this is called the Yomaji and the Yomaji I'm not actually super familiar with I think it's from Japan I do know that much and it looks like it's just literally taken over this whole plot so this is one that you might want to put in a container <laughs> and control a little bit but you know you plant it once you're gonna have it forever I still got to research maybe more on the, some of the benefits and how to use it uh, personally um, but I know that it did grow really well in my garden and you know based on how it's grown here it's literally taken over maybe a good quarter <laughs> of this person's uh, little garden plot so yeah some of these things you guys have to be uh, careful with I think uh, besides the perennials, I also want to encourage you guys to grow different annual crops that you may not be familiar with. So I want to show you guys one that's predominantly planted at this community garden that I actually haven't seen in this high in numbers anywhere. So one of the major vegetables that I'm seeing this time of year, and once again we are in uh, the winter time here, is this guy right here. Let me go ahead and see if I could lower down and show you guys. Uh, yeah, so it's yeah right behind me there. I don't know if you guys could see all that stuff But uh, these guys they kind of look like lettuce, but they're not exactly lettuce Actually, well, they are lettuce, but anyways what they are they're lettuce not intended for use by eating the leaves Like we would all think oh, yeah, you got to grow lettuce to eat the leaves, right? Uh, this lettuce is actually grown for its uh, tender tasty stem Eating the stems on some of my romaines and whatnot are some of the favorite things for me. I really like the crunch and how delicious they are. And if you guys like those too, then you're going to want to grow this guy, which like, I'm not like everybody here is growing it, but like 75% of the people here at least have some kind of like uh, uh, area of their garden plot growing the say lettuce. And that's a lettuce, it's an Asian lettuce grown for its delicious and crunchy stems. Yes, of course, you could also eat the greens of this lettuce as well. 
but most people I think are growing them for the stems as as you could see because you know some of the uh, bottom growth greens are just simply not being harvested they want that nice crunchy uh, stem that we know and love so much you know one of the things I want to let you guys know is I want you guys always to focus on new and different varieties I'll put a link down below this video uh, to uh, a few Asian seed sources uh, Kitazawa seed is one of them I think evergreen seeds is another one you guys can grow all kinds of different Asian greens and this is especially important if you guys live in hot climates if you guys live in hot climates then you're going to want to grow more of the Asian greens because some of the Asian greens have been adapted to growing in hotter climates are going to do better for you especially in the middle of the summer you know if you live in a place that's actually quite nice and warm so yeah once again diversity it's a key, it's one of my keys to success in gardening so the sun's going down here in Southern California but before it goes down I want to share with you guys some other things that I saw that's really cool here man and you know I just like to give you guys ideas you know and things that I see things that I can share with you guys and give you guys ideas as well and uh, here's one of them this is something I've never seen before myself I mean if you guys have watched me for a while you guys know that I made a crate garden right that's where I like filled up crates you know like plastic produce crates sometimes they're actually reused in the produce industry but a lot of times some of them are actually just disposed of and thrown away after one use all this plastic going to waste the landfill so I made a video and if I remember I'll put a link down below this video on how to make a crate garden a crate raised bed garden they're taking that to the next level right here check this out right up on the top I don't know if you guys could see this up on the top here it's basically just a raised bed and they got a raised bed and it's just lined with wood here as the top frame and then they got like you know uh, lettuce and onions and whatnot up top but if we go down further let's take a look what this raised bed is made out of check it out you guys can see that this is made oh, let me move over here sorry <laughs> this is actually made from those crates so they got the crates going you know the the long way on this side and these ones were from I think uh, they could be from like uh, cactus fruits or the tomatillos and then these are going the long way maybe they could have did a little bit better stacking job because like uh, maybe they did this actually on purpose to offset stacking because now they could grow out the side here and gr gr get more growth but even then besides growing out the side oh, and let me let me go ahead and give you guys a, a shot so you guys can see the what it looks like here all right so there it is <laughs> you guys can see the top and then you guys can see the layers there's like basically three uh, produce uh, bins tall and I like these produce bins because they actually have a uh, small holes on them so the dirt actually does not come out of them and then some of these are offset so they could actually plant things coming out the side so they're now growing more in less space because they're growing vertically uh, even in some of these actually they're just popping holes in it to just grow things out diagonally so that's definitely really cool and I want to show you guys the side over here check this out all right, so that's going down the side here. And on this side, basically, they just popped a, popped a hole and then they basically put a cup to like hold back some of the dirt and then they planted a, a you know, Swiss chard coming out of the cup here so they could grow vertically um, you know, out of the cup to grow more food and less space. I'm really curious to see how this is gonna work. You know, in some climates where it stays moist, you're gonna be able to get away with this, especially all the organic matter in there is holding and retaining the water. Um, they got a lot of soil matter in there, so that's really good. In some cases, though, I've seen a lot, so, a lot of times, depending on the climate, you know, once again, like in Las Vegas, you know, this uh, container garden would not really work too well because things would dry out really fast in the heat. But yeah, I definitely really uh, love this idea of growing in the plastic crates. Now, I know some of you guys might be thinking, John, man, plastic, that's toxic, man. Is that BPA free? Well, I don't know what kind of plastic this stuff is made out of. It's probably some of the cheapest plastic. But here's the thing, right? Even if you guys grow in plastic, it's still better than what you could be buying at the grocery store, right? You got some good soil and all this stuff, you know, good organic soil. It's, you know, even if you grew this stuff here in the plastic, it's better than conventional stuff at the store. And in my opinion, even organic stuff at the store, because, you know, once again, when you're buying produce in the store, be it conventional or organic, you know, they're not growing it for your health. The reason why the farmers are growing it is for the money for the profits right and they're cutting a lot of corners are not adding the nutrients to the soil that they should be in addition even organic produce and non-organic produce not organic produce especially sprayed with chemical pesticides and non-organic produce maybe GMO and 
all kind of crazy stuff they're doing to your food. So know where your food comes from. And you know, growing in a plastic, you know, uh, situation like this, not my first choice. But hey, if it gets you eating your own food, I'd say grow for it. Of course, it'd be probably better to do something like this out of wood or maybe some kind of metal like that. Anyways, I want to show you guys another really cool um, garden plot here that actually uh, excited me about, uh, excited me, and I wanted to share with you guys, so maybe you guys could do something like this as well. So now I want to share with you guys another garden plot here at the Halbrun Community Garden. And uh, basically it's right behind me here, and as you guys can see, let's see if I get a nice shot for you guys. All right, that's a pretty good shot. You guys can see what's going on. Basically they got like a little hoop here, and it's all made out of this uh, fencing. It's called like hog wire fencing, available at farm uh, supply stores, feed stores maybe. And basically it's just a long sheet and basically they just uh, stuck it in the ground on one side and then they stuck it on the ground on the other side to make a nice big arch. Let me go ahead and go back there for you guys. You guys can see the arch. So this gives you basically more room to grow food up vertically. So I really want you guys to, whether you're growing a community garden plot or at your home to grow vertically, put up trellises, you know, make a little archway. I'd actually like to make this a little bit taller so you could actually walk underneath it. You could grow things, you know, that in the shade underneath it. They got some uh, beans uh, currently growing up here. You know, there's another person that uh, built some kind of structure and they're growing a uh, chayote squash vines up on top. And that kind of looked like some of the chayote squash vines got a little bit burned, maybe because it got a little bit too cold, but uh, they're coming back and I even seen some, uh, some fruits on there. So another tip that's very important for me, and hopefully you guys too, and especially I would hope some of the gardeners here that are gardening the community garden. I mean, at my place, I got, you know, a pretty good amount of space to be gardening in, but if you're a community gardener here, you have a very limited uh, space that you could actually be gardening because you rent one plot. And so you're not supposed to like grow outside your plot. So it's very important to maximize the space that you have to grow the most amount of food. So if you guys look right behind me, right, in this uh, bed behind me, you guys can see they got really good utilization of their space. They're growing like basically everything's planted actually fairly close. All the plants are literally touching each other and uh, they're growing lots of food in this space behind me. And the other thing is they're not just growing like all onions. They're growing onions, say lettuce, they got turnips here. They got all kinds of different things growing. So once again, growing some diversity, right? So you're going to grow high volumes of food, space properly, space close together and uh, grow different things, you know, so you have insurance, like say your onions don't make it, you're still gonna have your lettuce, you know, or some of the other crops, the kale or whatever, that's growing. So you're always gonna have something growing by diversifying. And yeah, definitely by also planting close, it's gonna save you guys, um, you know, a water. Uh, the closer your plants are to each other, the more the sun's hitting your plants instead of the soil and evaporating off the water. So now I want to show you guys another personal tip that I have, kind of like one of my many pet peeves, but that's just me. So uh, what we're seeing here is just a nice uh, garden plot, and as you guys can see, there's uh, these really nice, huge cauliflower plants, right? They got a couple, but they already harvested a couple down there, but uh, here's one right here that uh, just got harvested, and to me, basically, like if you're playing poker, you never want to leave your money on the table. I think there's some kind of country western song about like leaving money on the table when you're playing poker or some card game, right? And I don't want you guys to leave like food in the ground once you're done harvesting. You know, for cauliflower, let's see if we get you a nice shot here of this cauliflower inside. Maybe. <laughs> Anyways, that's the uh, cauliflower inside and that's why people normally grow cauliflower. They grow cauliflower for the flower itself, right? But to me, cauliflower is more than just the flower that is eaten, right? The more valuable part of the cauliflower is actually all the delicious green leaves. And as you guys can see, they harvested this down here. They cut it back to eat it. But they look at this, man. Look at this nice, big, large leaf. I mean, this thing is huge. It's like two feet like, like long. So basically, they're leaving money on the table. They're leaving leaves on the ground. I mean, if we just move down further, you guys could see even more of this like left lots of just basically scrap leaves that you know will turn into compost which is good to feed the microbiology in the soil and whatnot break it down you know grow plants in the future but i think a better use of your leaves instead of just composting down especially nice leaves like nice cauliflower leaves instead of letting them break down like that turn into compost is for you to eat them or feed them to your pets or your animals right much better use what would i do with cauliflower leaves well 
Same thing I'd do with broccoli leaves, cauliflower leaves, Brussels sprout leaves, you know, kale leaves or collard leaves. They're all related. They all taste very similar. And especially in the winter time, the cauliflower, broccoli, and kale and other cruciferous leaves actually get sweeter because it's the sweetness that actually brings up the sugar content and the sugar content does not freeze as easily as water content will. So they get sweeter in the winter time. So like I would just cook these guys up if you guys are into cooking. I personally would uh, juice them. Excellent thing to make juice out of. You could turn them into green smoothies. Also make uh, kale chips or instead of kale chips, you can make broccoli chips or uh, cauliflower chips. Just spread, you know, cut them up, spread some batter on them, dehydrate them or put them in to an oven at low temperature. It's just gonna dehydrate it down and you guys could be eating your uh, cauliflower greens chips <laughs> instead of potato chips, which in my opinion are much healthier for you. So now I want to share with you guys another garden plot actually in this community garden and it's the one behind me here. As you guys can see, they got basically uh, some grape vines here that are uh, dormant season right now, actually a couple. And then uh, down below, you guys can see like all the different greens they have planted, like lots of different lettuces and whatnot right now. But I want to kind of go down lower to the ground level here for you guys and check this out. So what they're using here, they're using like a 12 inch by 12 inch approximately stepping stone squares. These are about maybe I think around a dollar each or something like that. And what they did was they basically uh, sunk these like maybe uh, one quarter underneath the ground and they left maybe like three quarters popping up and they basically just made a line with it and uh, this forms their raised bed. So you could have used wood, wood will rot out, wood's probably a lot cheaper than using this stuff but this is definitely a cool idea. Maybe they had access to these, maybe they got them free on Craigslist, I don't know. But uh, yeah, definitely holds back the soil and also raises up the soil level. You know, that's something also very important to me, you know. I mean, this raised bed behind me, and this garden plot behind me, you guys can see, um, basically they did not raise up the soil. So when you guys raise up the soil, let's go down a little further for you guys. You guys raise up the soil, you guys could bring in soil and, you know, add more fer fer fertility in the soil and soil microbes and compost and the fungal dominated compost and the rock dust and worm castings in your soil mix so you could have actually healthier and better soil than just what is in the ground. So I always encourage you guys to uh, bring in additional compost and soil because you know after time you know uh, nutrients may be depleted from the soil especially if you're not renewing that regularly by adding compost. And that's another tip I recommend you guys you know after every season always add in some compost and things like rock dust um, to your soil because what, what we don't think about as gardeners in a lot of cases right there's lettuce growing here, there's grapes growing here, and as they're growing, right, those plants are pulling nutrients out of the ground. And so minimally, we wanna add back the nutrients that the lettuce or the grapes or whatever that grew um, pulled out, we wanna add at least minimum that much back in. My goal is to actually add in more than what my plants pulled out so I could make the plants, I could make the soil more fertile than when I started. So it looks like the sun has set on me and I don't have too much more recording time for you guys, but I wanna give you guys uh, two more tips here. One is simply this. You guys can see the bed right behind me there. Basically it has, uh, you know, is, is gone fallow this season. You know, here in the winter season and here in Southern California, you can easily grow year round, <laughs> um, especially in Northern California too, as long as you're not like maybe up where it gets snow, you guys could grow year round, you know, in this garden plot behind me, you know, actually they have really well utilization. They have it planted out with lots of different foods and whatnot over here. And so I want you guys to basically grow year round if you're able. I mean, even in some places like Maine, you know, even Maine, you're thinking, John, I can't grow year round in Maine. Yes, if you had like a hoop house or even a double hoop house, you could grow year round in Maine. You want to check out, uh, you know, there's uh, people that write books on these topics. <laughs> uh, Four Seasons Harvest or Four Seasons Gardener or Four Seasons Farmer, I think is a book. Um, but yeah, you guys could do it there, of course, in a climate such as Southern California. It's easy to grow year-round, and I want you guys to grow year-round, whether you have a community garden plot or your home space, because, you know, this is space, it, whether you're renting a community garden plot or whether you're rent renting or paying off your home mortgage like I am, you know, you're already paid for the space. Why not use it to grow some food? And yes, wintertime, many places, maybe not the best to be growing food because things grow, you know, a lot, uh, you know, slower. And maybe the things aren't as fun, like everybody likes growing tomatoes and peppers and cucumbers and all these things in the wintertime. Definitely the best time to be growing some of your uh, really 
rich and nutritious leafy green vegetables, some of which I share with you guys today. So the last tip I want to share with you guys as the sun goes down is actually right here in this plot here. You guys can see right behind me. And it's all these guys. And these guys in this plot are all weeds. I believe this is not intentionally planted, although it may be. <laughs> you never know. But basically what we're looking at for most gardeners is actually a weed. This is known as the mallow. And the mallow grows as a weed. And you can see like there's a bigger mallow that uh, probably went to uh, you know seed over there that probably dropped a lot of seeds. But basically the immature seed pods are known as cheese because they kind of look like an old fashioned cheese wheel. Uh, you could eat the immature seed pods, no problem whatsoever. Uh, the stalks of the mallow can be used for cordage or making a rope and twine, whatnot. But people are not familiar with the mallow, that the, the mallow, the greens here, really nice and tender. I was actually on a hike with my girlfriend earlier and I fed her some mallow she had never tasted before. She's like, oh, that tastes like lettuce. And yeah, to me, the young tender mallow, when it's this small, just emerging out of the ground this time of year, mmm tastes like lettuce. I mean, it has a really mild flavor, a little bit of green. When they get older, maybe not quite as good. This would be excellent to add to salads and uh, yeah, delicious. So I really want to encourage you guys also to eat the weeds. And there's a really cool dude on YouTube, Eat the Weeds is his YouTube channel. And he'll educate you guys about all the edible weeds that are out there. Mallow is just one of many that you may be having already growing in your garden. Of course, dandelions is another one. You know, uh, lamb's quarters could be another one, the chickweed, another one, and there's so many. So don't discount the fact that they're weeds. In fact, in many cases, weeds are actually more nutritious <laughs> than the cultivated vegetables that you're trying to grow anyways. Also, be sure to check the link down below. If I remember, I'll put a link to a video I did with my friend Katrina Blair, who actually wrote a book on uh, identifying and uh, eating the most common available weeds that may be growing near you. I think it was like 12 or 13 weeds. And uh, she wrote a book on it. And if you buy her book through the special link in the video, she'll also send you the weed seeds. And I guarantee you guys that if you're unable to, and to, to be successful growing a garden, a vegetable garden, right? Throw out these weed seeds and then you'll be a successful vegetable gardener because the weed seeds, they don't care about nothing. They're just gonna grow with or without you. <laughs> Anyways, I'm having too much fun here in Southern California. I'm going to head back to, uh, you know, my home tomorrow. But uh, anyways, if you guys enjoyed this episode here at the Community Garden, just my ramblings and tips and all this stuff, hey, give me a thumbs up. Let me know. This is kind of a spontaneous video. Just like to hang out with other cool gardeners and see what's kind of going on because I learned a few things and hopefully you guys learned a few things. Uh, you know, along the way as well. But yeah, give me a thumbs up if you liked it. So also be sure to click that subscribe button right down below to be notified of my new and upcoming episodes that have coming out about every three to four days on this YouTube channel. You never know where I'm going to show up or what you'll be learning on my YouTube channel. And also be sure to check my past episodes. My past episodes are a wealth of knowledge, over 1,200 episodes. I think actually maybe over 1,300 now on all areas and all aspects so you, got, you guys could grow your own food at home. And I just love sharing my tips and tricks and things that I learned like I've learned today coming here that you guys could also uh, learn and grow from. So uh, with that, my name is John Kohler with GrowingYourGreens.com. We'll see you next time. And until then, remember, keep on growing.